Cool TV proudly presents Raceland Rams Baseball as the Cool Hit Sports Network brings you coverage of the Rams live from Raceland, Kentucky. Now let's head to the field for the pregame show. Raceland Rams Baseball live on Cool TV. And a pleasant good evening once again from Raceland, Kentucky. Welcome into the pregame show here on Cool TV as we bring you game number two of this 63rd district seating matchup between Raceland and Lewis County. Game that was scheduled to be up in Vansburg, but Mother Nature had other decisions to make on that one as the Ohio River crested and the Salt Lick Creek that runs right behind the field there in Lewis County. Well, it's about 30 feet out into the outfield. So they had to make the decision. Weather pending tomorrow and talking with Coach Holder just a little while ago, he said, I said, why not? Just come here, let's play it, let's get it in. So that's what they're doing. So Lewis County, the scoreboard is set correctly. Raceland will be the visiting team on the scoreboard tonight uh, here in this second game of the 62nd or 63rd district seating matchups. Raceland won the opening game last night, four to one. It was a pitcher's duel between Kaysen Roberts and Briar Parsons. Parsons gets the win. He goes seven innings, three hits, struck out six, walked two, gave up only one run. Did that on 89 pitches. Kaysen Roberts on the other side was pretty good as well. Six innings, five hits, four runs, three earned. Struck out seven, walked four. Three of those walks went to Braden Webb. Uh, one of those being intentional. But uh, a couple of big swings. The biggest one coming from Parker Fannin, who hit an RBI triple, in which the Rams put two up in the third. That proved to be enough. Uh, Lewis County scratched a little bit late. Both teams had opportunities early in the ball games. Grayson was the one that got it across first. And again, we had two, two pitchers that just basically served it up and, and said, here it is, you know, 13 strikeouts between the two pitchers. Uh, that'll get it done on both on most nights. Uh, hour and 39 minutes it took us to roll through that one last evening. And it was just a good game to be a part of. Uh, it flowed, there was strategy. The game was always within reach and uh, just two good teams that really took care of the baseball last night. And I talked with Coach Holder after the game and. He said, you know, he said, you hate to have to talk about moral victories. He goes, but you have to leave feeling pretty good about yourself. He said, especially when you look at it and say, that's probably the team that's going to be standing at the top of the 16th when the season comes to a conclusion. So they felt pretty confident about themselves and where they finished. Can they get things done here tonight? And even the series at one, as we've started 63rd district play last evening, it was Greenup defeating Russell nine to three. They'll, Two will tangle tonight, and then we'll flip things around next week. Greenup County's in town. Lewis County gets Russell. And then the last matchup in two weeks will be Russell and Raceland, Greenup, and Lewis. Again, all the games here and at Lewis County you can catch right here on Cool TV. All right, let's take a break. When we come back. We'll uh, break down the matchup for you, get you ready for first pitch as we've got Lewis County and Raceland here in game number two of the 63rd District seating matchups as we continue our coverage here on Cool TV. Hello everyone, I am Rick Clark. Let me introduce you to Carlisle, Annabelle, and Zach. And as you can tell by these commercials, this family has a lot of fun. We have a great team here at Clark's. And we would love for you to join our family. Whether you're a young person looking for your first job, someone who's looking for extra work, or maybe you're ready to start a career at a growing company, we want to talk to you. To find out more and start the process, go to MyClarksPNS.com. Clark's Pub and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. River Cities Builders is a licensed general contractor specializing in commercial and industrial projects, and they have a history and reputation of providing top-notch expertise through their experienced and devoted workforce. River Cities Builders also is a gas facility maintenance company offering petroleum equipment maintenance and EMV compliant upgrades for smart payment terminals, and they offer 24 hours, seven days a week emergency service. Call 606-473-4112 or visit River Cities buildersinc.com when you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. Where does your money go? When you bank with us, your deposit becomes your neighbor's loan. 
A real estate agent sells a house. They get a commission. They deposit it with us. We use it to make an auto loan to one of our customers. Hometown people helping each other grow. That's what it's all about. First in People's Bank and Trust Company, member FDIC. We are the home office. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feel. Check out their specialty items in person or order them online at osmondpharmacy.com. Osmond Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osmond Pharmacy and Grill today. Osmond Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg. Back here in Raisin, as we get you set for game number two of the 63rd District seeding matchups between the Rams and the Lions. Lewis County out taking their warm ups, docking the, uh, donning the new powder blue jerseys. I was on board with them until I saw all the red around them, and I was like, no, these look like the old school Cardinals. And then I said, Jack Likens, you ruined this. So, Jack, if you're watching, I am not a fan of the new jerseys, even though they've got my favorite color on them, that powder blue. I was so excited when I saw the jerseys on the mock-ups. But uh, in person, man, it just looks like the old school Cardinals. Uh, but uh, either way, a fresh look looked really good. Looking at the game last night, not a lot of hits to speak of. Three for Lewis County, six for Raceland. Parker Fannin and Braxton Egbert, each with two hits for their respective teams. Both had an, an extra base hit. Egbert had a double. Fannin put a triple in as he laced one over top of Egbert's head at a straightaway center field. That brought in the first run of the ball game. Caden Shore last night goes 0 for 1, but had two runs driven in, both with bunts, as he uh, he sacrificed in runs in both of his uh, second and third at-bats. A really nice job, too. And I was talking with Coach Holder, talking with Coach Mills afterwards, and you know, you're talking about the, the situational of the, of the game, and both of them talking about, you know, it was just, the game had that, that momentum flow to it. You'd kind of grab a little bit, and then it would go away, and then the X team would grab it and kind of move around. And so it was just a good game to be a part of. And, uh, it's, again, if you're a, a fan of the game and you love being a part of games like that right there, whether you're a coach, a player, a parent, just someone casually watching along, that was a fun baseball game to be a part of. And it had nothing to do with the time element. It just it was the game of baseball. There were no pitch clocks. There were no, uh, you know, everything that can go in and out of a game. It just, everything flowed. And that's what I like so much about it. And I said it many times last night throughout the contest. All right, let's take a look at our starting lineups. We'll start first with the visitors on the scoreboard tonight, the Raceland Rams. Again, this game originally scheduled to be up in Vanceburg, but uh, due to the water issues there on the field because of the uh, Ohio River getting up and uh, flooding the, uh, the Salt Lick Creek that's right there behind the uh, right field wall. Uh, they've got lots of water in on their fields. They're not going to be able to play up there tonight, so we brought it here. So Parker Phantom will lead things off. He'll play center field. Caden Shore moves over to third base tonight. Eli Lynn will catch. He'll bat third. The cleanup hitter is Braden Webb at first base. Zane Bailey bats fifth. He's in right field. Parker Eisen sixth and shortstop. Connor Thacker moves over to left field tonight. He'll bat seventh. Carson Bowden will do the designated hitter position tonight. He'll bat eighth. He'll swing for the pitcher of Landon Bloss. And batting ninth and playing second base is Michael Pennington. Fannin, Shore, Lynn, Webb, Bailey, Ison, Thacker, Bowden, and Pennington. A starting nine for Marty Mills is Rams. 17 and two on the season, 1 and 0 in 63rd district play. Now let's take a look at Sammy Holder's Lewis County Lions, seven and seven on the season. Pretty much the same names in there, different positions though. Connor Blake will lead things off. He'll play left field. Colton Tackett will catch, he'll bat second. Kyron Ferguson moves over to shortstop tonight. He bats third. The cleanup hitter is, is Xavier Prater. He'll be your pitcher. Batting fifth at second base, Cason Roberts. Batting sixth in center field, Braxton Egbert. Batting seventh and playing third base tonight is Cam Ferris. Batting eighth as the designated hitter is Waylon Reeder. He'll bat for Helpenstein out in right field. And batting ninth at first base is Brody Detillion. Plank Tackett, Ferguson, Prater, Roberts, Egbert, Ferris, Reeder, and Detillion. Starting at nine for Sammy's holders. Sammy Holder, excuse me. Seven and seven, Lewis County Lions. 
mixture of sun and clouds that we've been dealing with. And man, we had one beautiful cloud come in and uh, it's about to uncover. <laughs> and you'll start to see the uh, plague surface here start to brighten up very nice. It dropped the temperature a good seven, eight degrees from what it was when we went through setting everything up here. Uh, but we are in the high 80s this evening. Uh, it's, that's what I said. In this area, it's the only place that you can go from winter to summer in two days and not even think anything of it. That's just the way it is, the way things roll out. Our umpire and crew making their way in tonight. They'll be in the powder blues this evening. Dave Salisbury behind the plate. Dave Anderson on the base paths. It was Dave Anderson who actually gave me the heads up today that said that the game had been moved. And uh, no sooner than I'd gotten off the phone with, uh, with Dave, Trey Mills, the uh, younger son of Marty Mills, well, his, his older of his, young, of his two sons, I should say, he, uh, he's a teacher in the building with us. I actually coached him when he was a player here. He walks into my room and he says, hey, coach, we're, we're moved. And I said, yeah, I just got the message. I said, thanks for letting me know, though. So, Raceland tonight trying to take care of business to go to 2-0 in the district. And then pending, we're looking at a game on Thursday that's going to be an add-on game that will be against the winner of the 15th Region All-A tournament tonight in the championship game it's pikeville and paintsville and uh, they're going to try to play that game on thursday that's what coach mills is looking for there's rain on friday looking at that they've got prom on saturday district games on monday and tuesday and the tournament starts next weekend so you, know, you want to be able to get yourself into a rhythm and be able to go to that tournament and have everything the way it wants to go so that's something that they're trying to keep from happening to the point to where it uh, you don't drag things out and you're limping into the tournament because you had to wait for another team to come and play you. So weather pending and uh, the acceptance from the other team after we get to winter tonight from the 15th of either Paintsville or Pikeville. We'll play the all-A sectional between the 15th and the 16th here Thursday night. That should be around a 6, 6.30 first pitch. And we'll have the action right here on Cool TV. Coach Holder coming out for the meeting at home plate. Our crew this evening, Travis Otworth, Felicia Collier. With me last night, they'll be with me much of the games this year. Uh, they do a remarkable job with everything they do. First time with us here on Cool TV, hit that subscribe button. If you see something you like, give us a thumbs up, hit that bell. Each time we put out new material, we'll give you an alert there on your mobile device. Approaching 3,300 subscribers. We're greatly appreciative of all of our subscribers. Got over 3,000 right there before the regional tournament for basketball season. And, uh, just uh, phenomenal just following that we've been able to pick up and just a little bit over starting in toward the batter, latter part of our second year. And uh, we greatly appreciate all of our fine sponsors and all their support. Of course, Clark's Pump and Shops, A&A Porta Potties, and River City's Builders, uh, our title sponsors through all of our sports coverage through no matter which games that we have on. Again, weather impeding tomorrow. Heavy thunderstorms and flooding type rain scheduled for tomorrow afternoon. That was the reason they decided not to play and try to play tomorrow because there was a good chance it was going to get rained out. And then Thursday was the all A that they're trying to get to. And you know, Coach Holder said, look, he said, I don't care. Let's just come here and play. He said, it's all that matters is we get the games in. So um, it's not the first time that they've had to do this and do it with this team. Um, it's happened many times. I've seen it before when the water's gotten in, into the concession stand out there in Vanceburg. It wasn't anywhere near that high today, but uh, certainly no way that you would have been able to play it simply because of where the water was Easy, going into it. Welcome to Worthington. This evening, 16th region matchup between the Lewis County Lions and your Raceland Rams. And now for the starting lineup, first for the visitors on the scoreboard this evening, the Raceland Rams. Starting in center field, number 10, Parker Bannon. So our starting lineup's being announced. We'll go ahead and step out for our Starting final break. Base, we'll come back. We'll play some baseball. Four. Raceland and Lewis County here in Ramland for game number two. It's after this on Cool TV. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition-free. Good at Ashland Community and Technical College. 
This scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. Fall hunting season is here. Border Sporting Goods has your best selection of Hoyt and Matthews bows as well as 10-point crossbows with a full selection of accessories for all your hunting needs. Borders also offers a full selection of shotguns and rifles with plenty of ammunition and reloading supplies along with a wide selection of benchmark and case knives. Borders is your headquarters for the largest selection of Liberty gun safes in the area no matter how big or small you need to keep your firearms safe. Before your next hunting excursion, stop by and stock up at Borders Sporting Goods, US 60 West in Ashland. If you're looking for a complete discount pharmacy with old-fashioned service and excellent prices, look no more. Since 1979, Stultz Pharmacy has provided our area with the finest in pharmacy care, 24-hour emergency prescription service, free delivery, and drive through service for prescriptions. Stultz Pharmacy continues to fill all of your expectations. And they carry a nice selection of gift items. For hometown service, see the professionals at Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup. More than you expect from a pharmacy. Stultz Pharmacy. When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best around. I'm April Perry, the CEO of Kentucky Farmers Bank. On average, our employees have been with Kentucky Farmers Bank for over 10 years, and that is important to you and us. We want you to know who you are dealing with. Whether you are financing a new home, buying a car, or remodeling your kitchen, Kentucky Farmers Bank is the better bank for all your needs. Kentucky Farmers Bank, the better bank for all your financial needs since 1931. Located in Ashland, Summit, and Cadletsburg. KentuckyFarmersBank.com. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Our national anthem performed by Mr. Alan Jackson. Ready for baseball here in Ramland, game number two of the 63rd district seating matchups. Racing will be the visitors on the scoreboard tonight due to the rain up in Vanceburg that brought the river up into the Salt Lick Creek and it is flooded onto the field. So they were unable to play up there tonight. So they made the decision this morning to move the game here. So the Rams will bat first and will be the visitors here in this game number two between these two contests. Defensively for the Lions this evening, Plank, Egbert, and Helpenstein. That's left to right. Ferris, Ferguson, Roberts, Dettillion. That's third to first. Colton Tackett behind the dish. And the right-hander of Xavier Prater will be on the bump. Prater making his way out and Colton Tackett having a quick word with his umpires tonight. Taking a look at Xavier Prater, this will be his fifth appearance on the season. He's got a record of two and one. Has not given up an earned run. He's allowed six runs this year, but none of those have been earned. He's walked, worked eight innings, six hits, striking out 13, walking two. 
tall, lanky young man has really kind of gotten into his body, especially during basketball season. He's uh, slimmed down and firmed up. And uh, he's a really, really great, just an all-around athlete, great kid too. Good fastball, off-speed pitch as well. Works it in and out of the zone. And again, last night we saw with Cason Roberts, he did a phenomenal job too of just kind of throwing to contact, letting his defense play behind him. And for the most part, I think both teams ended up with one error in the ball game each. For the most part, teams took care of business. That's all you can ask for. So Fannin Shore and Lynn, the three that'll start things off for the Rams. Parker Fannin will lead things off. Fannin batting 385 on the season. 20 hits, 14 driven in, three doubles, a trip, two triples. One of those coming last night. And he roasted Egbert down in center field on a ball straight away that got over top of his head and allowed Fannin to go to third. Prater into his motion, the first pitch. Is in there for a cold strike, and this ball game is underway. A little tardy on the start time, 6-11. Sunfield skies beating down on the playing surface here, the artificial turf. Current temperature, 87 degrees. Breaky ball runs wide, it's one and one. Bannon crowding that inner half of the plate as he does. Prater with one foot on the rubber, one foot off. The right-hander kicks and deals. That misses low for a ball. It's two and one. Ferris pinched in over on the corner at third. Outfield straight away, not very deep. Out on the corners. Here's the two one from Prater. That one's downstairs, it's three and one. Not the guy that you want to put on base early. 34 out of 30, 33 out of 34 stolen base attempts. That's number one in the state of Kentucky. Fannin awaits the 3-1. He lifts this one skyward into the right center gap. Egbert fighting the sun, drifting over, makes the catch. And there's one away. So it brings in the third baseman tonight, Caden Shore. Shore went 0 for 1 last night with two sacrifice bunts and drove into both of those when he had runners at third base. A 375 hitter is the junior, 15 hits, 16 driven in, leads the team with walks with 19. And he lifts this one skyward. It's going to drift out of play on the third base side. He falls behind nothing and one. Check our Cool Hit Sports trivia question tonight coming up in the second inning. Got my producer over here scrambling. Not yet, my man, not yet. A good one for you. Go back to 2009 for our trivia question this evening. Here's the 01. It's downstairs, count evens at 101. Some interesting stuff on this date as well. Some old trivia to speak of. 1-1 one, one hit right back to Prater at the mound. Easy play as he'll flip it over to Detillion for the second out of the inning. Now bang the catcher, number 14, Tila Lynn. So it brings in Eli Lind, a 368 hitter. Lind last night, one for three with a double. That one's low for a ball. Two down in the frame. Prater tried to work a clean inning. Close stance for the Rams catcher. That one's downstairs, it's 2-0. 
Braden Webb in the on-deck circle would go next. He didn't have an official plate appearance last night in three at-bats. Three walks, the last one intentionally. He didn't make it to the home plate. He started walking that direction, and Holder looked at him and said, put him on. The 2-0. 3-0. Got to try to work himself back as he only walked two batters this season. He sneaks that one in there for a called strike. Three and one. Two walks over eight innings and gets it done. Has a save as well in his two and one, two and oh record. He's got to battle himself back here in a three one count with two down in the inning. This one's rolled over to Ferris at third. He bobbles it, picks it up. Strong throw, not in time. So the error on the third baseman gives Raceland its first base runner of the ball game. And we'll get a courtesy runner over at first for the catcher. Now batting the first baseman, number five, Braden Webb. Aiden Schaefer coming on to run. So Braden Webb steps in, a 451 hitter, same Average he had last evening. Three plate appearances, but did not do anything besides draw walks. Prater from the chest. Tries to sneak that one in the outside corner, but it misses for a ball, 1-0. Great smell of popcorn raining its way up from the press or the underneath the press box here. There's a ball lifted off the end of the bat, into the gap. Egbert coming over, diving in, it comes off his glove. That's going to bring Schaefer all the way around from first base. He slides in safely, and Raceland takes an early 1 0 lead on the RBI double from Braden Webb. Egbert did a great job of getting over to that ball and made a diving effort to get to it, but it hit in the top of his glove and kicked out. So the Rams knit the scoreboard early on the two out, two RBI double, and Zane Bailey comes in now. And again, another run that Prater has given up this season that is unearned. His seventh run he's allowed, all seven have been unearned. 1-0 pitch after the shortstop. Ferguson fields and throws, and that'll end the inning. But the Rams get a run across in the first on the RBI double from Braden Webb. They lead it 1-0 as we go to the bottom of inning number one here on Cool TV. J.D. Flooring 2017 Ashland Road Greenup has been family owned and operated for over 30 years featuring top of the line material, guaranteed installation and absolutely no one can beat J.D. Flooring's price. Need to replace your current flooring in one room or the entire house? Call J.D. Flooring in Greenup 606-473-0411 for a free estimate. A call that can get your house ready for any occasion. You'll absolutely love your new flooring from J.D. Flooring. 2017 Ashland Road, Greenup. The Greenup County Public Library System is the best. Read the latest bestsellers in large print, regular print, or audio CDs. You can also check out movies or place a hold on a book on our website or call one of the library locations to place a hold. There are community meeting rooms available by reservation at all locations for clubs and organizations. And be sure to check out the Jesse Stewart Collection at the Greenup County Branch. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter. Look at your pitcher for tonight, Landon Bloss. He'll get the start, his fourth appearance on the season. He's worked nine in the third innings, three hits, two runs, none earned. Striking out four, striking out eight and walking four, excuse me. He'll go at the top three of the order for the Lions. As Plank Tackett and Ferguson will Start things off trailing one nothing. So 
So the inning continued with an error. What should have been a 1-2-3 inning. On a ground ball to third. And then Braden Webb laced one into the gap in left center. Egbert tried to make a diving grab, and it comes out of his glove as he got to it. And that allowed the runner to come all the way from first to home. And the Rams take the early 1-0 lead. So Connor Plank leads things off. 267 hitter, eight hits, two driven in. Plank last night, 0 for 3. First pitch misses for a ball. Right-hander back to his motion. 1-0 pitch misses wide, 2-0. Oh. Good look at those new digs for the Lions and the powder blue with the Lewis outlined in red with the white on the chest and then the same numerals on the back of the jerseys. Here's a 2-0 from Bloss. That's high and wide, ball three. Plank, one pitch away from working a leadoff walk here to open up the home first inning. A straight four pitches all to the outside corner and a leadoff walk issued to Mr. Connor Plank. Defensively behind Bloss, it's Thacker, Fannin, and Bailey. That's left to right. Third to first is Shore, Ison, Pennington, and Webb. Eli Lynn behind the dish. And in comes Colton Tackett, the catcher. Tackett, a 292 hitter, seven hits, nine driven in with a double and eight walks on the year. That's a called strike. Tackett last night, 0 for 2 with a walk. Also struck out. Runner going. Bunt down the first base side. This one's trouble. There's nobody there, and they get it successfully there. So the infield single on the bunt from Colton Tackett has two by the, two runners on him, but nobody out here in the first. Beautiful bunt as he put it right at the first baseman, and there was nobody there as the runner was stealing that pulled the second baseman across. That brings in Kyron Ferguson. Lions shortstop tonight, a 400 hitter. Ferguson last night went 0 for 3, but hammered the ball three times. Called strike there on the breaking ball outside corner. Great opportunity here for the Lions, down one nothing, but two on with nobody out. Breaking ball upstairs, one and one. Plank out at second, tack it over at first. Loss a look towards second. A long hold in the pitch. That one's in the turf. Lind keeps that one at his feet as it just trickles behind him. The both runners will stay put. Count goes to two and one. Something just happened to our scoreboard out in right center field. It just shut off. Here's the two one. Lifted skyward in the infield. Pennington settles under an infield fly rule. Batter is out. So there's one down in the inning. So it brings in the pitcher, Xavier Prater. Prater batting 419 on the season. Last night went 0 for 3. I'm 
one's high for a ball. Lead off walk by Plank and attack it with an infield single off of a bunt. As the two runners aboard for the Lions here to start things off in the home first. Sneaks that one in there for a called strike. Kelly evens at one and one. Look at Braden Webb over at first base. Tackett just behind him with his lead. They throw back toward first base and Tackett's easily back to the bag. Here's the 1-1. Breaking ball, that's down the line. Left field, that one falls in for a base hit. And the Lions have the bases juiced here in the first. So the second hit of the ball game for the Lions. And that brings in the second baseman for this evening's game of Kaysen Roberts. Roberts batting 190 on the year, four hits. Last night, he went 0 for 2. Corners in, middle back with one down in the inning. Nice pitch there by Bloss. It's called strike. Pillows covered in powdered blue. Plank at third, tack it out at second. Prater running over at first. Rams will love a ground ball double play right here to get out of the inning. That one's in the turf. Nice job there by Lynn to take that one off the chest and keep everybody at bay. It's a count evens at one and one. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch there by Bloss, one and two. Roberts moves up in that front half of the box, spreading out that stance a little bit wider now. Has that front foot on that white line in the box. Here's the one-two from Bloss. Swing and a miss, took something off and got him to go through it. A really nice pitch there by Landon Bloss, two down in the inning. So Braxton Egbert comes in. A 370 hitter, he had a good night game last night. He had two of the three hits from the Lions. Great opportunity here with the bases juiced. Try to poke one through and even the game at one. Rams got the run across on an RBI double from Braden Webb after an error allowed the inning to continue with two outs. And Webb made them pay. Two and zero. Oh. Nice pitch. Two balls and a strike to the Lions center fielder. I was talking with Coach Holder after the game last night. He was talking about that last time that he intentionally walked Webb. He said, "I talked to Scotty Collins over at Round County." He said, it sounded like he was hitting the ball pretty good. He said, I wasn't going to give him a chance. Foul away on a breaking ball. Nice pitch. Nice at bat here. Bloss fell behind 2-0. and oh. He's got it even at 2-2. Two and two. Two's wild across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two down in the first. Bases full for the Lions. They trail at one nothing. Bloss wiggle out of the jam here in the first inning. The 2-2. Downstairs, it's a full count, and that lets all the runners – Get that head start on the pitch. Here's the payoff pitch. Misses high, ball four, and we're even at one. Now, my third baseman, number 
And now we'll get a runner for Tackett. Four, As Stevenson will come on to run. So Cam Ferris steps in, a 222 hitter. He rocked one into the gap in left center last night for a double. He'd like to pick up another one here and push Lewis County out in front. Looks at a pitch inside for a ball, 1-0. Fouled straight back, 101. Swing and a miss, nice pitch. One ball, two strikes. Snuck in the curveball for a cold strike three, and that ends the inning. The Lions get one back. They leave the bases juiced. We head to the second. We're tied at one on the, after this on Cool TV. Spring fishing season is just around the corner, and Border Sporting Goods is your fishing headquarters for rods and reels from G. Loomis, St. Croy, Fenwick, Luz, Daiwa, Shimano, and Abu Garcia. No matter what species of fish you are targeting, Borders has the perfect setup to make your next trip on the water a success. Borders has baits in every style and size with a wide selection of tackle for Berkeley, Loop, Strike King, Zoom, Z-Man, Bandit, and many more. Before hitting the water for your next fishing trip, stop by and stock up at Borders Sporting Goods, US 60 West in Ashland. Kentucky Christian University is a private, nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of Eastern Kentucky in Grayson. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit to campus. 1-1 one, one as we go to the second inning here in Raceland. James Carr, you're happy to have you along with us here this evening. Take a look at our Coyote Sports trivia question in just a few moments. Do up this inning for the Rams. Six, seven, and eight. Ison Thacker and Bowden. Parker Ison will start things off. Rams shortstop. Ison batting 313 on this season. 17 hits. Excuse me, 15 hits, 17 runs scored. 13 driven in with a double. If I would just wait till it come up on the screen, I could read. Rather than trying to read it off of a spreadsheet. Rams wiggle out of the first inning jam there with the Lions leaving the bases juiced and only coming away with one run. Here's the 1-0. This one's shot back up the middle. Ferguson with a diving attempt, can't get there. And Eisen leads things off with a single to center. Second hit of the ball game for the Rams. Brings in Connor Thacker. Rams left fielder tonight. 0 for 3 last night with three strikeouts. Thacker batting 372 on the season. 16 hits, 14 driven in. Good stick on that left-handed side. Breaking ball stays upstairs. 1-0. Ison with a good speed over at first. 15 of 17 on stolen base attempts. Raceland 109 of 121 on the season. That's a fastball with the knees. Count evens at 101. Yep. 
Outside corner called strike one and two. And ejected Thacker walks away from the batter's box on that one. Prater will look at Ison at first from the chest, the right hander. Comes the plate, and Thacker goes the other way with it, just like somebody said to do. Pokes it right down the line in left field. And back to back singles has two on for the Rams here to start the second. So Carson Bowden steps in with the Rams designated hitter for tonight's game. Bowden, a 111 hitter. He's one of nine on the season. He's driven in a run. Shows bunt, pulls it back. Thacker at first, Ison out at second. Nobody out, but two runners on. Scoreboard operator was late getting those runners on base out there. Who was that guy? Oh, it's me. I'm sorry. Two and zero. Oh. Trying to take a little bit off of my producer tonight so he can fiddle more with his cameras rather than the computer. So I'm trying to score the game, keep the scoreboard, and call the game. So if I forget, don't don't get too nasty with me. Two zero. This one's bunted out in front. Prater fields and throws. They'll get the out at first base, but the sacrifice moves both runners. And there's one away in the inning. Now bang the second baseman, number three, Michael Pennington. So one to four on the put out. And Michael Pennington steps in. Pennington a 196 hitter on the season. Last night went one for three, had a bunt single. He rolled one up the third base line, and Ferguson came in on it, just overran it. Never had a chance to make a play. Called strike there on a nice pitch on the outer half. Big opportunity here for the Rams with two in scoring position. Pennington shells bunt, fouls this one away, and now he's behind nothing in two. Top of the order, Parker Fannin in the on-deck circle will go next. Singles from Ison and Thacker. They stand out at second and third. Pennington trying to clutch up here with two strikes. Breaking ball stays up out of the zone. He lays off one and two. The one, two. Fast ball inside called strike three. Late strike by the umpire. Either way, it's a strikeout. And there's two down in the inning. Now by the center fielder, number 10, Parker Fannin. And we get a visit from Coach Holder to the mound. While we do that, let's take a look at our Coach Sports trivia question tonight. It was on this day to back in 19, or excuse me, 2009, Yankee Stadium was debuted, the new Yankee Stadium. Who did the Yankees play in that first game in new Yankee Stadium? Was it A, the Red Sox, B, the Orioles, See the Tigers, D the Indians. Text me your answer, 606-571-7281. Don't look it up on Google. I'm giving you four options there, for goodness sakes. Who did the Yankees play in the debut of the new Yankee Stadium back on this day to Major League Baseball history in 2009? 606-571-7281, that's the text line. Red Sox, A, B, Orioles, C, Tigers, D, Indians. We'll check the answer coming up on the fifth inning. Be sure when you text tonight, too, be sure to put your name with it so I know who you are so I can recognize you when you get the correct answer. 
All right, so back to the top of the order we go with Parker Fannin. Fannin flew out his first time through, and they're going to put him on. So the intentional walk loads the bases, and they're going to take their chance with Caden Shore. Again, make sure when you text me, I'm getting some answers coming in. Make sure to please put your name with it so I know who you are. So I can acknowledge you if you do get it correct. Shore hit right back to the pitcher his first time through. He looks at a breaking ball that stays upstairs. Several answers rolling through. I do have at least one correct answer. Here's a ball right at the right fielder, and that one's going to fall in for at least one run. Here comes a throw in. Here comes a throw to the plate, and they got him. Very nice throw as they cut down Connor Thacker at the plate. But the RBI single gives Reeson the lead, and they take a 2-1 lead as we head to the bottom of inning number two. Nice play by the Lewis County. Rams take the lead 2-1. We're back after this on Cool TV. At First National Bank, we strive to make every person that walks through our doors feel like family. Because to us, you are. For over 120 years, we have lived in and served the families of Kentucky with genuine care through the good times and the bad. Come and see the difference banking with family can truly make for you at any of our seven locations or visit our website at www dot fnbgrayson.com first national bank member fdic not only is state senator robin webb proud to support and congratulate our youth in all their endeavors in and out of the classroom but your state senator robin webb is also proud to support and work for all the adults in her district robin webb strives to put forth the best for youth and adults alike whether it's in frankfurt or here at home in her district know that robin webb puts you first in all of her decisions she makes state senator robin webb drives harder every day to make kentucky a better place to work live and have fun Here's a look at that last play on the Grayson Sporting Goods instant replay. Helpenstein fired one to Detillion and then a beautiful throw in to Tackett who cuts down Thacker at the plate and keeps the deficit at only one. So eight, nine at the top this inning for the Lions. Waylon Reeder will lead things off. You're a 200 hitter on the season. Last night came in on a pinch hit opportunity and struck out. Fouls this one straight back. Count goes to one and one. Was fouled at the plate. One ball and two strikes to Reeder. Swing and a miss, strike three. One down in the inning. That brings in Brody Detillion. This is low for a ball. One out. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch. Rams with four hits. Lewis County with two. 
One error by the – I put that in the wrong spot. That was on the Lions, not the Rams. In the scoreboard flipped around tonight because of home and visitor. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I heard somebody say something. I don't know what it was, but either way, they said thank you. Two balls and a strike. That one's upstairs, three and one. Ball four, one out walk, and back to the top of the order we go. Connor Plank walked his first time through. So we're over at the cutout at third. Breaking ball tumbles in there. Nice late life there on the breaker. Little 12-6 curve. That's a wiffle ball pitch. Plank steps out to adjust the batting gloves. Throw to first. To put in perspective the direction this game is moving as compared to last night, imagine taking a jar of molasses into Alaska in the middle of winter and trying to dump them out. That is currently where we are. Swing and a miss. He had bad intentions with that pitch. Came up empty. He's behind nothing in two. Don't understand the music. <laughs> the dramatic effect, I guess. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it's something you're going after. Breaking ball stays up. One and two. Two one Rams here in the home second with the Lions, the home team tonight, due to the rain that forced the, the water up into the playing field out in Vanceburg. That's in there for cold strike three. Well, that sounds a little more like what you're supposed to get. <laughs> Two down in the inning. Question is that Plank turned like he was headed to first base. I don't know if he forgot the count or what he thought. I think he thought it was ball four. So Colton Tackett's one for one. He's up. Chops this one down the third base side and a foul ball. Reached on a bunt single back in that first inning. Lions missed a golden opportunity in that frame, leaving the bases juiced, only pushing across one. In the turf, smothered there by Lind. He does a really good job behind the dish. Receives it well. He has grown exponentially in his process since starting as a freshman. Pitch misses inside, two and one. A few games in Major League underway. Twins and the Orioles, Rockies, Phillies, Giants, Marlins. One game already final today. The Tigers beat the Rangers 4-2 up in Detroit. Here's a chopper over towards shortstop. Ison running through it. Makes a strong throw, but he gets him just in time. That looked like he was late. And that'll end the inning. Bang, bang, play at the bag. And Sammy Holder's going to chase down Davey Anderson, have some words with him. Either way, 
It's two to one as we go to the third after this on Cool TV. JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. is owned and managed by Shane Wallingford to be a solutions provider for manufacturers tailoring to their specialized needs. It was created with a vision that good communication among all parties will provide the best answer to the problem. From ball mills used in pulverization to custom design of equipment or components, JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. will gladly work with clients to resolve the issues that are prevalent. Their vision is to make your project their successful business. JSB Industrial Solutions, Tollsboro Kentucky. Rev up your autumn adventure and refuel at Clark's Pump and Shop. Make a pit stop and treat yourself to our assortment of snacks and drinks. Clark's Pump and Shop has the perfect treats to satisfy your fall cravings. From our seasonal lattes and iced coffees to specialty donuts and desserts. Don't just fuel up your vehicle, fuel your taste buds at Clark's Pump and Shop, your ultimate road companion. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Well, let's take a look at the instant replay on that last play here on the bang bang play. Woo! Bang bang. Either way, it was called an out, and producers over here killing things. And you don't have to get mad, man. It's just a play in baseball. It's okay. Three, four, and five to up this inning for the Rams. Lind, Webb, and Bailey are to the order. Lind reached on the error that allowed the first run of the ball game to come across the plate. Number 14, Eli Lind. First pitch strike there from Brader. Very hot and sticky night here in Ramland. We had some nice cloud covers that worked in right before the game. It cooled it off and in a sense said, see you later. Here's a slow roller out to Ferguson is short. He takes the hop and lost the ball. Kicked right out the back door there as he tried to make the play. So Lind reaches on the air for the second time in the ball game. He's just trying to go to the glove, and there was nothing there. So Schaefer on to run for Lind, and Braden Webb to the plate. Webb roped a double into the gap and brought home the first run of the ball game. It's first time through. Breaking ball stays off the plate. Prater checks on the runner over at first. To the plate he comes. Runner going, throw down to second base, good throw, and they got him. Nice throw by Colton Tackett. That's the second runner he's thrown out in this series. One last night at third, and he cut Schaefer down by a mile. Pitch was a ball, but a strong throw there by the catcher, Colton Tackett. And that was a no-doubter out at second base for the first out of the inning. This is a ball blistered into the gap, and that one's going a long ways. That one's up into the parking lot, and see you later. Braden Webbs yells Yahtzee as he clears the fence for the fifth time this season. And instead of a two-run shot, it's a one-run shot. Either way, the solo bomb puts it up for the Rams. Three to one, they lead it. And I would say that tonight will be the final pitch that that young man sees that he can hit. That one, my friends, was a no-doubter. He just hit that ball probably close to 380 feet, maybe 380 three, three, 
85. That was a shot. So Zane Bailey climbs in. You knew something like that was coming after Schaefer got thrown out at second base. There's a roller out to Ferguson. Strong throw across in time. Two down. Now Brings in Parker Ison. He singled his first time through. Down to the frame, a solo shot from Braden Webb. Makes a three to one Rams. That evens a count at the knees on the inner half, one and one. Give you another look at our trivia question here in the bottom of the third inning. The producer was a little predisposed there for a moment. Here's the one one. Ice and Shell's bunt pulls it back. It's two and one. Mr. Producer, if he uh, gets a little delayed like he's been getting in the box here on the next pitch, give me the trivia question. Here's the 2-1. He rockets this one into the gap, and that one's going to find green grass that will hop off the turf. Eisen's motoring in out at second. It's going to be a stand-up two-out double for the Rams shortstop. Sixth hit of the ball game for the Rams. And Connor Thacker to the plate. He poked one down the left field line his first time through. Was cut down at the plate trying to score on the ball hit out into right field. Big swing and a miss. Thacker struck out three times last night in that 4-1 win for the Rams. Well, we got time. Now let's look at our trivia question. It was on this date in Major League Baseball history back in 2009. The new Yankee Stadium was unveiled, and the first team to play the Yankees was whom? A, the Red Sox, B, the Orioles, C, the Tigers, D, the Indians. You can text me, 606-571-7281. Put your answer and your name so I know who gets, if you do get it correct, of who you are. I'll check the answer in the top of inning number five. A couple of answers have already come in. Some right, some not. Nice pitch inside at the knees. Nothing in two. Hacker settles back in on that left-hand side. Prater. Back to work, and this one's blistered. That one's over top the right fielder's head, and that one up against the wall. Thacker's going to bring home Ison. He's on his horse. He's going for three. Here comes the throw to third base. Thacker is sliding in safely. He doesn't slide. He needed to, but either way, it's going to be a stand-up RBI triple for Connor Thacker. That's his second triple of the season, and it's 4-1 to one Rams. He smoked that one over Helpenstein's head. So now Carson Bowden into the plate. Bowden a sacrifice his first time through. Looks at a pitch in there for a cold strike. Two out magic for the Rams. Seven hits already in this ball game. They had six last night. Nice spot just misses in, one and one. Nice 
Nice pitch on the outer half, one and two. Backer over at third, two down in the frame. Prater from the windup. Inside, nice pitch. Just misses in, two and two. 4-1 Rams here in the visiting third inning. 2-2 two, two fouled away. This is low, and it's a full count. Here's the payoff pitch. Low ball four. And the two-out walk has runners at the corners. Now man, it's taking baseman, number three, Michael Pennington. So it brings in Michael Pennington, who's 0 for 1. Pennington struck out his first time through. Tack it out to have a quick word with his battery mate. Coach Mills there talking with his second baseman. That tipped our crew this evening. Travis Onworth, Felicia Collier, phenomenal job as always. Pennington had an infield single last night on a bunt. Runners at the corners here for the Rams. They lead it 4-1. The big fly coming off the bat of Braden Webb to start the first run of this inning. And here's a ball back up the middle. Ferguson diving, can't get there. It's going to be an RBI single by Michael Pennington, 5-1 Rams. So the eighth hit of the ball game rolls it back to the top of the order in Parker Fannin. Rams threatening to push this one out of reach. And it lays off the breaking ball that stays upstairs. Rams trying to move to 2-0 in district play with a win last night, 4-1 over Lewis. They have jumped all over Prater here in this inning with three in the frame. And this is a flare down the right field line. If that gets past the right fielder, it's into the corner, and that's going to make him running all day long. Two runs are going to score. Fannin is headed to third. He'll pull up there with a two-out, two-RBI triple as he slides safely into third base. It's 7-1 to one Rams. His second triple of the series. And he got that one past Elpenstein out and Ryan, and when it did, it made it all the way to the wall. So five across here in the frame. It's seven to one Rams, and Caden Shore to the plate. Breaking ball upstairs, one and zero. Oh. Rams doing this all with two outs. This is the ninth batter to come to the plate in the frame. 2-0 to Shore. Eli Lind in the on-deck circle would go next if the inning continues. So Parker Fannin picking up his third triple of the season. Continues to swing a very hot bat for the Rams. 3-0. Prater at 60 pitches. We're still here in the top of inning number three. 3-0 three delivery. Right down Broadway, a called strike three and one. <laughs> Orioles have jumped on the Twins, 3-0. Phillies lead the Rockies, 2-0. Giants in front of the Marlins, 1-0. Angels and Rays scoreless, top of the second inning. 
down at the Trop. Nice pitch, fisted off to the third base side. Ferris fighting the sun, makes the catch in foul territory, and that ends the inning. But the Rams played five in the frame. They take a 7-1 lead as we head to the bottom of inning number three after this on Cool TV. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feel. Check out their specialty items in person or order them online at osmondpharmacy.com. Osman Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osmond Pharmacy and Grill today. Osmond Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg. When you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. Bottom of third inning, seven to one Rams as they put five across. Big swing for Braden Webb as he clears the fence out in right center. As he pounds out his fifth home run of the season. And then Parker Fannin follows with an RBI triple to right, his second of the series. The Rams batted around a five spot. We'll get a new pitcher on the mound for the Rams as Michael Pennington comes on. Schaefer is going to go in at second base. For Pennington, this is his third appearance, no record to speak of, a 4.67 ERA. Three innings of work, three hits, three strikeouts, no walks, four runs, two earned. The line on Bloss, he goes two innings, two hits, one run, it was earned, strikes out, four walks, three. Pennington will stay in his batting order. So Bowden will bat for Schaefer, who comes on to play second base. Check that. That is not Schaefer. That's Bloss out at second base. My mistake. Trying to look through the uh, binoculars and looking at the numbers that they were standing out there. So Bloss goes from the mound to second, so he just trade positions with Pennington. So at the plate is Kyron Ferguson. He's 0 for 1. Had an infield fly over to Pennington at second base his first time through. Right-hander back to work, the 2-0. That's low. Three balls and no strike to Ferguson. Rams have opened up a 7-1 lead here in the third after a five-run third inning. And four straight pitches and a leadoff man aboard for the Lions. That brings in Xavier Prater, who's one for one. Line to left, his first time through. I just wondered why people drive by and toot their horn like that. I guess they just friendly and want to say hello. <laughs> so Pennington's off with a tough start as Lynn's going to go out and have a word with him. Five straight pitches all for balls. Look there over the shoulder of Sammy Holder as Lynn jogs back to the plate. Saw off there in the distance. The construction the new football field house. A lot of 
new things popping up here around Ramland. New playing surface here for baseball and for softball. We put the uh, time lapse video up last night for the baseball. From dirt to turf, we called it. Nice pitch. You can also watch that on our YouTube page at Cool Hits and on Cool TV there. If it's your first time with us here, hit that subscribe button if you've not done so. Give us a thumbs up if you see something you like. Hit that bell will alert you each time we put out new material. Here's the 1-1. One -one. This was a rocket into center field and a base hit. Second hit of the ball game for Prater. Third hit of the ball game for the Lions. And with two on and nobody out, 10 Casey Roberts to the plate. Roberts a strikeout victim his first time through. Yankees and Blue Jays underway. They're scoreless. Red Sox and Guardians up in Boston, as are the Mets and Pirates, all scoreless in those. Here's a throwback in at second base. Nearly had Ferguson picked off. Just got back in into the tag. Two on, but nobody out. Lions down six. Big opportunity here to claw their way back into this one. That's 2-0. and oh. Pennington struggling, finding the strike zone, and here comes our pitching coach, Chris Hughes, to have a quick word with him. Why well, does that? Let's take a look at our trivia question again. It's on this date back in 2009, the new Yankee Stadium was christened. Who was the first team that made their way into the new Yankee Stadium to play the Yanks for the first time? Was it A, the Red Sox, B, the Orioles, C, the Tigers, D, the Indians? Text me at 606-571-7281. Include your answer, A, B, C, or D, with your name, and we'll check the answer in the top of the fifth inning for who has it correct and who got it first correct. I've been in new Yankee Stadium. I was not impressed. That's speaking as a Red Sox fan and a baseball fan. It was, you know, for all the thrills and frills, everything was double priced. Programs and all other ballparks were $5. It was $10 in Yankee Stadium. $7 for a soda everywhere else. It was $12 in Yankee Stadium. Now, of course, you get the souvenir cups, but what do I want a souvenir cup from Yankee Stadium for? I hate the Yankees. Speaking of the Yankees, though, a sad note out of the Yankees is the longtime broadcaster, John Sterling, at the young age of 85, just out of nowhere decided – He's retiring. He's the uh, the radio broadcast voice for the Yankees, and you know I, I love listening to him call games. I hate the Yankees, but I just love. But that the one call that he'll always be recognized for is when the Yankees would win, and that like, yeah, Yankees win. But John Sterling, just 85 years old, and said, "I've had enough." He'd missed several games last year and some health issues running around as well. Nice job there by Pennington, Pennington to find the zone, even in things at two and two. I've seen a lot of the guys that's been around the game for a long time in the booth starting to hang it up. Bob Euchre, the oldest guy still around. That's low ball, three, it's full. You had Vince Scully and Marty Brenneman. Payoff pitch with two on and nobody out. See if Coach Holder starts his runners here. And they get Ferguson. In, in wiffle ball, he was still safe because he got back to the back, but he took that one in the backside. No Socom rules here. Pennington from the chest on a 3-2. 
This one's over to third base. Nice job by Shore. What a pick by the third baseman. Very fortunate there for the Lions that he didn't double everybody up or even start a triple play. That was a laser right at the third baseman. One down in the inning. Short typically a first baseman of trade. Moved over to play third base tonight. Shows off a little bit of leather there. Braxton Egbert to the plate. Runner going. Here's a throw down to third base, and that one gets passed and into left field. Low throw by Lind allows Ferguson to come around to score 7-2. to two. Two. Called that first pitch a strike. It looked like it was a ball. This one's into the gap. Fanon drifting over, trying to make a diving catch was Bailey. He can't get there. It falls in, and it's just going to go down as a single as Prater had to wait to make sure that the ball was not going to be caught. Here's a look at it on your Grayson Sporting Goods instant replay. Bailey tried to make a dive for it, but Phantom was right there with a backup. So runners at the corners. One down and Cam Ferris at the plate. Called strike there on the breaking ball. Somebody looked up on the answer on Google. They got too fancy. They sent me the team and the final score. That's a giveaway right there. Third to first move, nothing happening. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Bryan in the house. Making his entrance. There's a chopper down the third base side, but a foul ball. Nothing in two. Ferris roped a double here last night. Struck out looking. His only time at the plate this evening. That was to end the first inning when the bases were loaded. Runner going, swinging a miss, throw down to second is not in time. They go with a double steal. Here comes a throw to the plate. It's not in time as it gets past the catcher. And that'll move the runner first to third. So the strikeout is the second out of the inning. Prater steals home. Egbert will steal second and then move up on the error from the throw. So two down in the inning, Wayland Reeder to the plate. It's low for a ball. Big run standing 90 feet away for the Lions. They've got two back here, but they trail it seven to three. That's at the top of the zone for a called strike. Count evens at one and one. Bit of clouds trying to drift off the river and cover up that sunlight. Well, I would be much appreciative. 
I've actually been able to peel the lights up a little bit. Got the uh, sunglasses off. Two balls and a strike to Reeder. Tillian in the on-deck circle would go next. 7-3 here in the home third. Lions trailing by four. That's low three and one. Orioles blasting the Twins, 6 nothing in the third up in Baltimore. Phillies lead the Rockies now 2 nothing. Giants in front of the Marlins, 2 nothing. Angels, Rays, Yankees, Blue Jays, Guardians, Red Sox, Pirates, Mets, all scoreless. 3-1 misses high, ball four, and there's two on. So the two-out walk puts runners at the corners. Brings in the nine-hole hitter of Brody Detillion. Detillion walked his first time through. We're going to get a pinch runner for Reeder. Not a courtesy runner, but a pinch runner. Zane Spike. Difference between courtesy and pinch. So a pinch runner has to either stay in the game or their game is done if they come back out. They cannot re-enter. A courtesy runner can only run for the catcher and the pitcher, and they can come in, run, and then leave and come back again. But when you run for that runner or that whoever you go in for, you have to run for that same player every time. So like Mr. Schaefer running for Eli Lynn tonight, that is your courtesy runner for your catcher. That established in the first part of the ballgame. Here's the 1-0. 2-0. And you can elect to not run for those, and we've seen that here tonight with Ferguson and Prater both still running for themselves. Tackett has run for himself as well. Reader ran for himself last night. 2-0, swung on a miss. Very long swing there by Detillion. 2-1. At the corners for the Lions. They trail at 7-3. They've got two back here in the inning. Pennington trying to work himself out of a little minor jam here in the third. Downstairs, 3-1. Top of the order in the on-deck circle next. And that's a balk. So that's going to balk a run home and move the runner out to second. And it's seven to four. So the pitch does not count as it's a dead ball situation. So it's still a 3 1 count. Now runner at second base with two down. And Italian one pitch away from taking first base and the top of the order coming back up. Nice pitch on the outside corner called strike three and two. Here's the payoff pitch. Wide ball four and a two out walk. Has two runners aboard back to the top of the order we go and Connor Plank. Eighth batter to come to the plate here in this inning. Pennington already 30 pitches deep. Plank 0 for 1. Walked his first time up, struck out looking his last time through. No action down to the bullpen for the Rams. Rams got five in the home half, or the visiting half of this inning. Lewis County's put three back and raced a six-run deficit. It's down to three. That's upstairs, 2-0. and oh. Plank can work himself on. That puts you in the good part of your order of Tackett, Ferguson, and Prater with base, run base runners on board. Pennington struggling to find the zone. It's 3-0. 
Coach Mills just turned and told a couple guys to head toward the bullpen. Here's the 3 1, or 3 0, oh, excuse me. That's a called strike 3 and 1. I was looking ahead there. Looks like Stephen Pennington heading down to loosen up in the bullpen. 3 1 high, ball four, and they're loaded. Here comes Marty Mills to the. Mound to have a word. So two down in the inning. It started with a walk to Ferguson. Prater singled. Roberts hit an absolute rope right at shore over at third base for the first down. Then Egbert hit a nuclear missile out into right center field, but only got a single out of it because he had to. They had to wait to make sure that it was not caught. Ferris struck out, but then since then, it's been three walks and a balk. Three runs are across, and we're going to get a call to the bullpen as Parker Eisen is going to come on and pitch. We'll step out for a break. We'll break it down when we return after this on Cool TV. J.D. Flooring 2017 Ashland Road Greenup has been family owned and operated for over 30 years featuring top of the line material, guaranteed installation and absolutely no one can beat J.D. Flooring's price. Need to replace your current flooring in one room or the entire house? Call J.D. Flooring and Greenup 606-473-0411 for a free estimate. A call that can get your house ready for any occasion. You'll absolutely love your new flooring from J.D. Flooring. 2017 Ashland Road, Greenup. The Greenup County Public Library System is the best. Read the latest bestsellers in large print, regular print, or audio CDs. You can also check out movies or place a hold on a book on our website or call one of the library locations to place a hold. There are community meeting rooms available by reservation at all locations for clubs and organizations. And be sure to check out the Jesse Stewart Collection at the Greenup County Branch. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter. Call to the bullpen for the Rams. The shortstop Parker Eisen comes on. This will be his sixth appearance. He has a record of 2-0. He does have one save to his record. A 1.75 ERA, eight innings of work, three hits, ten strikeouts, four walks, two runs, both of those earned. He inherits a bases loaded jam with two down. And Colton Tackett, the ninth hitter of the ball game, or in this inning, excuse me, to the plate. Tackett, a single in the first, grounded out to end the second. And the first pitch from Ison, this is high for a ball. Pennington has moved over to shortstop. Bloss stays at second. Stephen Pennington down in the bullpen, warming up for the Rams. Three across for the Lions, they trail at 7-4. This one's hit to the moon on the right side. Bloss gives it a look up in the sun. Drifting back, reaches up, makes the catch, and ends the inning. So the Lions threaten, but they come up empty with a bases loaded jam for the second time in the ball game. They leave them juiced. They leave it, lead it 7-4 Rams as we head to the fourth after this on Cool TV. When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best around where does your money go when you bank with us your deposit becomes your neighbor's loan a real estate agent sells a house they get a commission they deposit it with us we use it to make an auto loan to one of our customers hometown people helping each other grow that's what it's all about first in people's bank and trust company member FDIC we are the home office Top of the fourth inning, sun beating down on the field. Getting late here in Ramland. 
as sun starting to set down US 23. Had a mixture of sun and clouds. And would love some of those clouds to pop back in again and cover up the rest of that sun for the rest of the evening. It's been sweltering hot today. High 80s when we started this ball game. But uh, it's gonna cool off tomorrow. We'll, uh, we'll see some rain, some heavy rains possible again tomorrow evening. Thursday is supposed to be really nice, mid 70s, no rain, and rain back in the forecast Saturday and or Friday and Saturday. So again, uh, enjoy the time and the weather as you have it. It's not gonna hang around for very long. Guardians have jumped out on the Red Sox, two nothing up in Boston. That game headed to the bottom of the second inning. Three, four, and five do up this inning for the Rams. Eli Lynn will lead things off. Lynn 0 for two, he's reached twice on errors. He hammers this one over to third base. Ferris a double pump and a throw. A low throw, but a pick by Natillion as he keeps the foot on the bag for the out. Nice job there by Brody Dettillion with the stretch on the wide throw from Ferris. Marty Mills thought he was safe, thinking he had pulled. But Dettillion had to go all the way into the front of the bag and keep his foot on the bag. And immediately you saw the umpire down the line, Dave Anderson, pointing, saying the foot was there. So Braden Webb steps in. He looks at a breaking ball in the center for a cold strike. He hit one of the moon his last time up. It bounced in the parking lot over the right center field wall. Another breaking ball. That one stays outside one and one. Eight total runs scored there in that third inning. It's seven to four. Rams batting as the visiting team here in game two. After the game was moved here today due to the rain Last week that flooded everything and the Ohio River has dumped off into the Salt Lick and that's the creek that falls right in behind the ball field there in Vanceburg. And it's got it up into the field. 2-1, hammered over to first base. Dettillion stays down on it, makes the pick. He'll win the foot race to first base. There's two down. This is exactly what Prater would need here. It's a quick inning. He's labored in about every inning he's gone through. 18, 15, 29. Zane Bailey to the plate. He's 0 for 2. Pair of ground outs, a shortstop. Into the first and the second out of the third. 1 0. This one's over to right field, helping Stein, giving it a look, drifting toward the line, makes the catch, and a clean inning for Xavier Prater on seven pitches as the Rams go in order. Seven to four, Rams lead it as we head to the bottom of inning number four after this on Cool TV. Primary Plus is celebrating 40 years of its mission of quality, advanced, affordable health care. With over 11 primary care locations throughout the region, Primary Plus believes in our communities and our patients. The Primary Plus name means primary care plus so much more. Offering extended services such as women's health, pediatrics, dental, counseling, diabetes management, infusion services, and on-site pharmacy that offers free delivery. Primary Plus believes in connecting health care for you and your family and is always welcoming new patients. Learn more at primaryplus.net. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition free. Good at Ashland Community and Technical College, this scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. 7-4 as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Xavier Prater, a phenomenal inning there in the fourth. He goes through the heart of the order on seven pitches. And this is a ball game. 
Rams put up five there in the third. Lewis County answered with three of their own. And they've got it down to three. And they've got the meat of the order, three, four, and five do up this inning. Parker Ison will stay on the pitch after coming in in relief there and getting out of the bases low to jam, only needing two pitches to do so. Kyron Ferguson starts things off. He's 0 for 1. Hit it into an infield fly in the first inning. Walked and scored in that three-run third. He rockets this one to straightaway center field. Fannin on his horse back to the warning track. Makes a great catch. That's why that young man's leading the state in stolen bases because that speed he has right there. There's not too many people around this area that makes that catch. Parker Fanta made it look easy, one down. Kyron Ferguson has knocked a cover off the ball this week and just hit it right at people. Smoked a couple of balls in the left last night that Zane Bailey made beautiful plays on. And he's just saying, what have I got to do to get a ball to drop here? Xavier Prater, two for two, two singles. That's at the knees. One on one. Orioles beating up on the Twins on seven to one. Miami has tied it up with San Francisco. The game's two two now. Padres and Brewers getting ready to get underway. Got that trivia question looming out there. We'll check the answer coming up at the top of the fifth inning. Here's a one two to Prater. That one's wide, two and two. I said back to work the two two. That's a low ball three, it's full. The softball girls coming over, and they must have made quick work of their ball game against Huntington High tonight as Prater picks up his third hit of the evening as he rockets one into the left field for a base hit. Fifth hit of the ball game for the Lions, and Prater has three of those. Kaysen Roberts 0 for 2. Strikeout victim and hit a rope right at shore over at third base. Swing and a miss. Good look there. Ferguson over at first as he leaks away from the bag. Roberts tries to cut on the breaking ball and comes up empty. It's nothing in two. Bottom of the fourth inning, 7-4, Rams in front here in this game number two of the district seeding matchups. 0-2 oh, sneaks that one in there for a called strike three. Two down. Nice pitch. That brings in Braxton Egbert, who's one for one. Walked him a stranded in the first, singled and scored in the third. Started to pull the trigger and lays off. It's in there at the top of the zone, 0 1. Ison from the chin. Swing and a miss. A little fastball in there. Running it up there in the mid 70s. Webb and Prater over at first base. Prater takes his lead. Ison trying to close things out quickly here in the fourth. Runner going. This one's chopped foul at the plate. Count hangs at no balls and two strikes. Prater has not attempted a stolen base this season. Coach Holder told me yesterday they called him Ellie De La Cruz. We want to see some of that De La Cruz speed right here. 0-2. Oh, 
Weekly hit, right side. Bloss drifting out into shallow right field at the line, makes the catch, and it ends the inning. We played four, seven to four Rams as we go to break here on the Grayson Sporting Goods Instant Replay. We're back after this on Cool TV. I'm April Perry, the CEO of Kentucky Farmers Bank. On average, our employees have been with Kentucky Farmers Bank for over 10 years, and that is important to you and us. We want you to know who you are dealing with. Whether you are financing a new home, buying a car, or remodeling your kitchen, Kentucky Farmers Bank is the better bank for all your needs. Kentucky Farmers Bank, the better bank for all your financial needs since 1931. Located in Ashland, Summit, and Catlettsburg. KentuckyFarmersBank.com, member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're looking for a complete discount pharmacy with old-fashioned service and excellent prices, look no more. Since 1979, Stultz Pharmacy has provided our area with the finest in pharmacy care, 24-hour emergency prescription service, free delivery, and drive through service for prescriptions. Stultz Pharmacy continues to fill all of your expectations. They carry a nice selection of gift items. For hometown service, see the professionals at Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup. More than you expect from a pharmacy. Stultz Pharmacy. We go to the fifth, seven to four, our score. Let's sneak in that trivia question one last time before we give the correct answer here in just a moment. On this date back in 2009, the Yankees played their first game in Yankees, the new Yankee Stadium. Who did they entertain? The Red Sox, the Orioles, the Tigers, or the Indians, A, B, C, or D? Text me, 606-571-7281. We'll check the answer here with an out in the inning. Six, seven, and eight, do up this inning for the Rams. Parker Eisen will lead things off. Eisen two for two in the ball game. He fouls this one away. Sun has finally got in behind that thickening cloud cover down over top of Lloyd. As we will see no more sunlight the rest of the evening unless it just gets that little slither there that's opened up. There's a ball down the line. That one's trouble in right field. Coming over and making a nice catch. There's the right fielder, Helpenstein. That one had trouble written all over it. He made a long run to haul that one in for the first down of the fifth. Nice play. I was kidding Coach Holder about Helpenstein yesterday. I said, did you transfer a kid from Germany in or something? He goes, nope. He said, he's homegrown. Youngster right there, only a freshman. One of four freshmen on the varsity road roster this season. Connor Thacker to the plate. He chops this one over to first base. Detillion will take it himself. Two down. So it brings in Carson Bowden. Bowden, Bowden. I guess Bowden. I keep wanting to call him Bowden, though. It just looks like Bowden. Bowden, I guess, is. Sacrificed his first time through, walked last time up. Came around to score. Back in a five run third inning. Looks at a breaking ball and stays up and in. Prater's pitch count, 18, 15, 29 in the first three innings. Seven pitches in the fourth. He's thrown, this will be number five here in the fifth. He misses that one low for a ball, 2-0. Oh. Here's the 2-0. That one's floating over toward right field. Helpenstein got a very late break on that one, and that one gets down for a base hit. Had a very late break on it, and take a look at it here on your Grayson Sporting Goods instant replay. Just could not get there. Tried to make a scoop on it. Luckily, he had backup there as Cason Roberts walked out to give him some assistance. 
We're going to get a pinch runner for the Rams as Smith will come on to run. And Michael Pennington will come in. He's one for two. Pennington a strikeout victim in the second, singled and scored in the third. 7-4 here in the fifth, the visiting fifth, due to this game being shifted over to race on the night. Top of the order, Fannin stands in the on-deck circle. And a first pitch in there for a called strike. One nice job downstairs. Tackett fields it out, throws it down the second base, and they got him. Nice throw there by Colton Tackett as his second runner he's got stealing. As the Rams come up empty on the stolen base attempt, we head to the bottom of inning number five, seven four. Our score. We're back after this on Cool TV. Spring fishing season is just around the corner, and Border Sporty Goods is your fishing headquarters for rods and reels from G. Loomis, St. Croix, Fenwick, Luz, Daiwa, Shimano, and Abu Garcia. No matter what species of fish you are targeting, Borders has the perfect setup to make your next trip on the water a success. Borders has baits in every style and size, with a wide selection of tackle for Bird Loop, Strike King, Zoom, Z-Man, Bandit, and many more. Before hitting the water for your next fishing trip, stop by and stock up at Border Sporty Goods, US 60 West in Ashland. River Cities Builders is a licensed general contractor specializing in commercial and industrial projects, and they have a history and reputation of providing top-notch expertise through their experienced and devoted workforce. River Cities Builders also is a gas facility maintenance company offering petroleum equipment maintenance and EMV compliant upgrades for smart payment terminals, and they offer 24 hours, seven days a week emergency service. Call 606-473-4112 or visit River Cities buildersinc.com I wish we would have gotten back two seconds sooner Eli Lynn just trying to make his throw down the second as he came up the ball just completely slipped out of his hands and it went nowhere but about three inches in front of him we go to the bottom of inning number five seven four Rams leading this one Cam Ferris will leave things off seven eight and nine to up this inning for the Lions Ferris is 0 for two two strikeouts tonight First pitch misses high for a ball. So the final book on Mr. Pennington, he goes two-thirds of an inning, two hits, three runs, all earned, walked four, struck out a batter. And Eisen falls behind here, 2-0. Ferris, Reeder, and Detillion, the three that will go here in the home fifth. Race on softball, working their way into the house tonight. They get a 15 to one win over Huntington High this evening. Second time this year they've roughed up Huntington. Beautiful night for ball here in the second 63rd district seeding game. That's on the outside corner for a called strike, three and one. Zane Smike going down into the bullpen to get loose for the Lions, and all of a sudden, Ferris finds himself in a full count. Nice and high on the hill, here he comes with a payoff pitch. Misses downstairs for ball four. So Ferris reaches for the first time tonight and it brings in Waylon Reeder. Reader 0 for 1. Strike out in a walk. That's a dart to the outside corner. 0 and 1. Ferris forgot to take his uh, Evo Shield ankle protector off over at first. Nice pitch. Nothing in two.
Eisen set the 0-2. Fouled away. No balls and two strikes. Bottom of the fifth inning, seven to four. Nice look there, Mr. Eisen high on the hill. Backdrop of Raisin Worthington Middle School in your screen. Right-hander set. Misses high with a fastball. One ball and two strikes. One, two, hit him. So two on with nobody out here in the fifth. And that brings in Brody Detillion. He represents what would be the game tying run as he comes to the plate now. Attempts at the bunt comes up empty. The 0 1. Called strike. Nice pitch on the outside corner. Nothing in two. Top of the order of Connor Plank. In the on deck circle, we'll go next. Lines threatening with another big opportunity here in the fifth. Swing and a miss. Strike three, one down. So we'll go back to the top of the order and Connor Plank, who's 0 for 1. Plank, two walks, scored a run in the first. He struck out looking in the second. Ferris out at second, Reeder at first. First pitch misses for a ball. We'll get our trivia question here on our next batter. The 1-0. Low for a ball. Two balls and no strikes. And now we'll have a Meeting real quick, so let's take a look at our trivia question. It was on this date back in 2009. The new Yankee Stadium was unveiled, and the first team to play against the Yankees was whom? A, the Red Sox, B, the Orioles, C, the Tigers, D, the Indians. The correct answer was D, the Cleveland Indians. Correct answer first given to me by Mr. Josh Reed. Thanks for all the folks that tuned in and texted in answers here tonight. Thanks for playing along with us. Plank back into the box. 2-0 and as Eisen takes a look back at second and comes to the plate, misses high for a ball. It's 3-0. and Lions have had the bases loaded in the first and the third. They've left the bases juiced both times. Eisen one pitch away from loading them here, and he hits the batter. So back-to-back -back hit Batman has the bases full with one out. And once again, the big part of the order coming up for the Lions. As the go-ahead or the go-ahead run comes to the plate here. The tying run is, is plank over at first. Rams are going to play it up on the corners and back for a double play ball in the middle. Tackett's one for three. He looks at a dart right down Broadway. 0 and 1. Three ducks on the pond for the Lions. Ferris at third, Reader out at second. Detillion over, or excuse me, Plank over at first. Nice stop there by the catcher. Two balls and a strike. Nowhere for him to go. Got to come to him here on a 2-1 count. Hey. 
Nice pitch at the knees. Two balls and two strikes. Kyron Ferguson in the on-deck circle would go next. He's hit some balls really hard in this series. He's not been able to get them down. Here's the 2-2. Off the end of the bat, drifts out of play on the first base side. Two balls, two strikes, and out. The base is full here in the fifth. Breaking ball, misses high. Here's a payoff pitch. It's hammered back up through the middle. That's a base hit. One run comes in to score. They'll go station to station and hold Reeder at third. But an RBI single for Colton Tackett. It's seven to five. Sixth hit of the ball game for the Lions. And Chris Hughes is going to make a visit to the mound. Well, we have a break in the action. We'll check in our Major League Baseball scores. Phillies lead the Rockies 2-0 in the sixth. Twins fall behind big early to the Orioles. They trail now 8-1 in the fifth. Giants and the Marlins are even at two. Angels grab a 3-1 lead over the Rays. That game in the top of the fifth inning. Guardians in front of the Red Sox, 2-0 up in Baltimore. That game in the third. Yankees take a 1-0 lead over the Blue Jays. That game headed to the bottom of the third inning. Pirates met scoreless. Padres take four in the first on the Brew Crew. 4-0 in the bottom of the first up in Milwaukee. One game final already today. The Rangers fall to the Tigers, 4-2 up in Detroit. Astros and Braves getting ready to get underway. Games later tonight, Cubs at the D-backs. Reds are at the Mariners. Cardinals at the Athletics. Nationals at the Dodgers. The Royals and the White Sox, they are rained out. They'll make that game up tomorrow. Reds falling last night to the Mariners, 9-3 out in Seattle. So Kyron Ferguson, he's 0 for 2, but he's hit a couple of balls really hard tonight. Hit some really hard balls in this series, just not been able to find them down. He went 0 for 3 last night with all three balls smoked. He looks at a pitch in there for a called strike. Reader at third, Plank out at second, tack it over at first. One down in the inning. Somebody got Mr. Salisbury to bail out of behind the plate. Fasky for time, not certain what it was, but. Ison trying to battle through here in the fifth. Sneaks that one in there for a called strike on the inner half upstairs. Nothing in two. Corners in, middle back. Oh, two. This is downstairs. One ball and no two strikes to the shortstop for the Lions. Foul tipped into the mitt. Lind hangs on for the strikeout. Two down. A very big out there. But that brings in Xavier Prater. He's been a ram killer here this evening. He's three for three. He's got half of the hits tonight for this Lions team. Chance to help his own cause. With the base is full. Breaking ball stays upstairs. Ison 31 pitches deep coming on this pitch in this frame. He's thrown, this will be number 47 in the ball game since taking over. 
in relief. 7-5 in the fifth. That one's just wide off the plate, 2-0. Tack it over at first base with Webb right behind him. 2-0 pitch. He was trying to park that one on the roof of the middle school, 2-1. Wasn't getting cheated there on the 2-0 swing. Downstairs, 3-1. and one. Lions have left the bases loaded twice in the ball game. One in the first, once in the third. Trying not to do it again here. Three one, he takes a golf hack at that one and comes up empty. Chase ball four. So the runners will be off on the movement here with two down in the inning. Frater a big wide stance there from the right side. The payoff pitch, misses high, ball four, and it's a one run ball game. So Kaysen Roberts steps in 0 for 3. Two strikeouts on the line out. He was retired via a strikeout looking in the fourth. Big swing and a miss. Roberts, the pitcher of record last night, threw a heck of a ball game, six innings. Took the loss, four to one. Nice pitch on the slider outside. Nothing in two. Tying run at third. Go ahead, run out at second. Seven six in the bottom of the fifth. The 0-2. Nice pitch outside corner called strike three. And that ends the inning. Lions push across two runs on a hit, but they leave them juiced. We've played five. It's seven, six Rams. We're back for more after this on Cool TV. JD Flooring 2017 Ashland Road Greenup has been family owned and operated for over 30 years, featuring top of the line material, guaranteed installation, and absolutely no one can beat JD Flooring's price. Need to replace your current flooring in one room or the entire house? Call JD Flooring and Greenup. 606-473-0411 for a free estimate. A call that can get your house ready for any occasion. You'll absolutely love your new flooring from JD Flooring. 2017 Ashland Road, Greenup. The Greenup County Public Library System is the best. Read the latest bestsellers in large print, regular print, or audio CDs. You can also check out movies or place a hold on a book on our website or call one of the library locations to place a hold. There are community meeting rooms available by reservation at all locations for clubs and organizations. And be sure to check out the Jesse Stewart Collection at the Greenup County Branch. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter. Prater out to work the sixth. Like I said, two good innings from him that it got him this other inning. He was 18 pitches in the first, 15 in the second, 29 in the third. He's thrown 15 pitches over the last two innings, seven in the fourth, eight in the fifth. He's going to go at nine in the top for the Rams. Connor Thacker heading down to the bullpen to warm up. He may take the ball in the sixth. Lions would like to try to hold suit here and grab a run in the home sixth and then not have to use the bats anymore. And even this series at 1-1. Box score looks like this. Seven hit runs, ten hits, two errors for the Rams, six, six, and two for the Lions. Michael Pennington leads things off. He's one for two. Struck out in the second, singled and scored in a third. He was at the plate when Gunnar Smith got caught stealing to end the fifth. And the first pitch breaker is in there for a call and strike 0 1. But my buddy Josh Reed sitting at the house, hanging out with his baby boy and watching baseball, living the life. 0 1, poke down the right field line, that'll get fouled. Hey, 
Funny thing is, I coached him in baseball too. <laughs> oh, two. Breaking ball, slow roller out to Ferguson. Takes the funny hop, picks and throws a strong throw, gets him at the back. Ferguson shows off the arm there as he caught the kind of the, the tweener bounce. And made a strong throw to cut down Pennington just before he got to the bag. A little gust from the gods turns the wind around and blows it out for the first time we've seen it here in the last couple of nights. Parker Fannin steps in. He's one for two. Had a triple back of the third over in the right field corner. He rockets this one out to center field. Coming on Egbert and makes a diving catch. What a grab by Braxton Egbert. As he robs extra bases from Fannin again. I think my producer was kind of in awe and forgot to hit the replay button. <laughs> He'll give you a routine fly ball and a diving catch he forgets. So in comes Caden Shores, one for three. First pitch misses low for a ball. So we're grounded out in the first, singled in the second, flew out in the third. Nice pitch on the breaking ball that gets in there for a called strike to even things at one on one. Lions will come to the plate with six, seven, and eight in the home sixth. Trying to keep it a one run ball game here. A breaking ball that's lifted deep right field. Helpenstein at the warning track makes the catch and a one, two, three inning for the Lions. We've played five and a half, it's seven to six. We go to the bottom of inning number six after this on Cool TV. Kentucky Christian University is a private, nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of Eastern Kentucky in Grayson. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit to campus. JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. is owned and managed by Shane Wallingford to be a solutions provider for manufacturers tailoring to their specialized needs. It was created with a vision that good communication among all parties will provide the best answer to the problem. From ball mills used in pulverization to custom design of equipment or components, JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. will gladly work with clients to resolve the issues that are prevalent. Their vision is to make your project their successful business. JSB Industrial Solutions, Tollsboro, Kentucky. All right, we got a call to the bullpen for the Rams. Center fielder Parker Fannin is going to take the ball. This will be a seventh appearance with a 2-2 two two record, a 4.85 ERA, 13 innings of work, 17 hits, eight strikeouts to 11 walks, 10 runs, nine of those earned. We've got wholesale line changes around the field as the Rams have to shift a lot of people to get everybody where they need them to go. So Webb moves from first to right. Bailey moves from right to center. Bloss will go from second to third. Pennington goes from short to second. Ison from the mound to short. And Caden Shore from third to first. And a partridge in a pear tree. Two people on the field that did not move positions, Connor Thacker and your catcher, Eli Lind. So Braxton Egbert leads things off, trailing 7-6 are the Lions here in the home sixth. Egbert one for two, singled in a third and scored. And the first pitch misses up and in for a ball. One zero pitch, 2-0, a little bit low. The Rams will counter with three, four, and five in the visiting seventh inning. 2-0 pitch, fouled straight back, two and one. Lights illuminating the artificial playing surface here. A 
Beautiful night for baseball. 2-1. Here's a chopper over to Bloss at third. He'll take the high hop, shuffle the feet. Strong throw, one down. Nice play there by Landon. There's his mama. I know that voice. That's my cousin. <laughs> had Landon in, in class last year. Quietest kid I think I've ever had in a classroom. He might have said maybe five words the entire school year. Cam Fair steps in. He's 0 for 2. Great kid, though. Here's a ball over to the left side. Ison Fields makes a long throw and airmails it. That was up against the fence. Ferris will stay there with an infield single, and the tying run is aboard. Ison made a great job just getting to that ball. But luckily, Ferris, with not a lot of speed, has to stay right there at first base. So Waylon Reuter steps in. He was hit by a pitch last time. Nice pitch in there for a cold strike. Look at Shore and Ferris over there at first base. The 0 1 downstairs. You talk about a guy who likes to talk. That's Mr. Shore over at first base. He's always talking. I've got him in class too. Fun kid. Younger brother of Braden Shore. We called Braden the hammer the way he would make his tags on players over at first base. I mean, he would catch it and just bury it in their back every time that they threw over there. 1 1. Chopped to the left side. Ison backhands. Nice throw. As they'll get the force out at second base as Pennington on the pick. Take a look at this one on your Grayson Sporting Goods instant replay. A dandy play there by Ison in the hole for the second out of the inning. Nice play all the way around there. Six to four on the putout. He races the lead runner, and we go to Brody Detillion, the number nine batter for the Lions. That one misses wide for a ball. That one's downstairs. Two balls and no strikes. Top of the order in the on-deck circle. Two down here in the 6-7-6 six, six ball game. Rams blew it open 7-1 back in the third with five runs. And then the Lions answered with three back. And they've clawed two more back in the fifth. Seven six is where it is. They have searched, stranded a small army on the base pass tonight, though. Three balls and a strike to Detillion. Lifts this one skyward and over top of our press box area and out of play. Count goes to full. Rams have walked nine batters tonight. It's one free time through the lineup for the Lions. Here's the payoff pitch. Ball four. So two on but two out. And back to the top of the order we go with Connor Plank. So the tying runs out at second now in scoring position and Reeder. Plank's 0 for 1. Two walks and a strikeout. And then was hit by a pitch last time through. He pokes this one to the right side and Shore boots it. Tries to field it and throw, can't come up with it. So the bases are going to be juiced. Has that one gone on short quickly and ate him up? So the third miscue of the ball game for the Rams brings up Colton Tackett, who's two for four in the ball game. Tackett singled his last time through. 
So the tying run 90 feet away from the Lions, the go-ahead run out at second base. Now Fannin will step off. From the stretch. This one's poked out toward the shortstop. Ison picks and throws to second base. And the Rams get out of the jam in the seventh, in the sixth. We've played six. Seven, six, our score. Rams coming to bat after this on Cool TV. At First National Bank, we strive to make every person that walks through our doors feel like family. Because to us, you are. For over 120 years, we have lived in and served the families of Kentucky with genuine care through the good times and the bad. Come and see the difference banking with family can truly make for you at any of our seven locations or visit our website at www.fnbgrayson.com. First National Bank, member FDIC. Not only is State Senator Robin Webb proud to support and congratulate our youth in all their endeavors in and out of the classroom, but your State Senator Robin Webb is also proud to support and work for all the adults in her district. Robin Webb strives to put forth the best for youth and adults alike. Whether it's in Frankfurt or here at home in her district, know that Robin Webb puts you first in all of her decisions she makes. State Senator Robin Webb drives harder every day to make Kentucky a better place to work, live, and have fun. Xavier Prater out for the seventh. He's at 84 pitches. He'll go to work on three, four, and five, Lynn, Webb, and Bailey. Trying to keep it at a one-run ball game. It'll be three, four, and five, Ferguson, Prater, and Roberts due up in the home seventh for the Lions. As they trying to steal one away here on the road playing as the home team. Over at softball tonight, the race on the Rams defeated Huntington High 15 to one. Congratulations to the ladies as they continue their winning ways. Put a two and one mark up this past weekend in the Tri-State Showcase. Big wins over Sims Valley, Ohio and Boyle County. They fell to Lincoln County, West Virginia, the number two team in class AAA out of West Virginia. Eli Lynn starts things off. He's 0 for 3. Reached on two errors and grounded out. Chases that breaking ball for a first pitch strike. Here's the 0 1. Tries to work upstairs. You can see Tackett there wanting that pitch up. Lynn doesn't chase, though. It's one and one for the Rams catcher. Slider stays off the plate. Two and one. Three and one as the fresh smell of hot dog sauce fills the aroma in front of us here on the press box. Best hot dogs bar none anywhere in the 16th region right here. Three and one. Inside ball four and a leadoff man aboard for the Rams to start the visiting seventh. Schaefer will come on as the courtesy runner. That's one thing I've always been as a connoisseur of the, the food. Each place I go, I always kind of take a look at, you know, what's good, what's not. It's really good here. So Braden Webb steps in, he's two for three. He left the yard with a solo shot back in the third inning. Had a double in the first. And he grounded out to first base his last time through. Looks at a pitch on the bottom part of the zone. 
This one's chopped over to the first base side and a foul ball. Schaefer got cut down trying to steal. Back in that third inning, and then the very next pitch, it was a solo shot that could have been a two-run home run. The 0-2. Fouled away. One ball and two strikes. Two and two. Two, two, right at the fence. Fouled away. Two balls and two strikes. Schaefer takes his lead over at first. Breaking ball in there, called strike three. Nice pitch for Prater as the right-hander picks up only his second strikeout of the ball game. One down in the inning. So Zane Bailey's 0 for three, climbs in. Two ground outs and a line out to the right fielder. He sends this one out to the second baseman. They could get two. There's one. Throw over, not in time. As Schaefer froze. So we get the force runner out at second base, four to six on the putout. And there's two down in the inning. And it brings in the shortstop. A Parker Ison. Misses low for a ball, one and oh. Prater's tossed a gem, battling from down seven one in the second inning, or excuse me, in the third inning, and has been in control since then. There's a ball cue balling up the first base side for a foul ball, the count evens at one and one. He just threw his 100th pitch. Again, your total, you're allowed 120 is your maximum. The only way you can go over 120 is if you are in a batter. You are allowed to finish that batter, and then you have to remove, be removed from the game. There's a runner going on a breaking ball. Strong throw down to second base is not in time as Bailey swipes second base. Pitch was a ball, so the count goes to two and one. It moves the runner out to second base. Two down in the inning. Rams trying to manufacture an insurance run, leading by only one. Here's seven to six late. 
Breaking ball stays upstairs, three and one. Downstairs ball four and a two out walk. Has two on and Connor Thacker coming to the plate. Now back the left fielder, number 15. Connor. Sammy Holder staying with his man. He's run, run with him to get to this point. Connor Thacker is two for three tonight. Singled his first time to left, tripled to right and then grounded out to first base his last time through. A breaky ball stays upstairs, and that's something that you can tell when a pitcher's getting tired. It's when they can't get on top of that breaking ball and get it to fall over. Two on, two out. Seven, six here in the seventh. Just misses wide, 2-0. and oh. Something as a hitter, you pretty much just set dead red, looking for that fastball, knowing that he's struggling getting the breaking ball over. Bailey leaking away from second into your screen there at the bottom. And this ball is hammered into the corner. That's going in for extra bases. Thacker on his horse. Bailey comes around to score. Eisen coming around to score. Thacker pulls up for a stand-up two RBI double, 9-6 Rams. Big swing of the bat there by Connor Thacker. And a two out. Double. Gives the Rams a little bit of breathing room as we go in the home seventh. Carson Bowden will check back in. First pitch misses high for a ball. The Rams had gone scoreless since putting five up in the third. But two here in the seventh makes it a three-run ball game. Two and oh. Michael Pennington in the on deck circle would go next. Thacker leaks away from the bag out of second there with Ferguson shadowing him. And then time requested at the plate. The 2-0, swing and a miss. He had bad intentions on that cut. That's the type of cut you like to see on a 2-0 pitch, though. If it's the one you like, you try to do something bad with it. Those first two swings are for you. The last one's for the team. Here's the 2-1. Fouled away. Down the right field line, count goes to two balls and two strikes. So the Lions are going to need at least three in the home seventh with Ferguson, Prater, and Roberts, the three scheduled to appear. Two balls, two strikes, two down here in the top of the seventh. Rams lead at 9-6. Another foul ball, a good piece of hitting here by Bowden as he gets that one away and hangs around for another. Prater at a 111 pitches. He has battled. Can he get one more? Breaking ball chopped over toward the third base side. Going to be a tough play from the first base or from 
Ferguson as it gets away from the first baseman. That allows Thacker to come around to score, and it's 10 to six on the throwing error. For some reason, Ferguson thought that Prater was coming to the back, so he was sprinting backward, which opened up a huge hole and put him completely out of position. And in the process, that allowed Thacker to come around and score on the error. Sparks on the run out at second base, or excuse me, out at first base, excuse me. And we get a meeting there on the mound with Sammy Holder talking to Mr. Prater. He has eight pitches remaining. And we're going to get a call to the bullpen. So pitching change coming up for the Lions. Waylon Reeder will take the ball, and we'll tell you about it when we return after this on Cool TV. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feed. Check out their specialty items in person or order them online at osmondpharmacy.com. Osmond Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osmond Pharmacy and Grill today. Osmond Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceboro. When you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. Call to the bullpen, Waylon Reeder will take over as he'll take over for Xavier Prater. Have we got stats for Mr. Reeder? Do we have anything for Mr. Reeder? His sixth appearance on the season, an 0-1-1 record, a 10.14 ERA, nine and two-thirds innings of work, 23 hits, Six strikeouts, nine walks, 18 runs, 14 of those earned. He'll inherit a runner at first base with two down and a 10-6 ball game. Prater's book is still open. And let's see where he is going to come in for. I believe he's going to first base. as he is staying in the ball game. So yeah, he is gonna go to first base. So Prater goes to first, Detillion moves to right. So Michael Pennington, one for three, steps in. First pitch misses high for a ball. Long hold in the pitch, called strike, one on one. Russell has defeated Greenup tonight, five nothing. That one's in the turf as Reeder falls down on the way to the plate with a ball. Two balls and a strike. 
Runner at first base instead of second. That's my mistake there on the screen. Two one in there, called strike. Two and two. <laughs> Chopper over to third. Ferris picks. Strong throw, and that ends the inning. Lions need at least four as we go to the bottom of inning number seven. They trail at 10-6. We're back after this on Cool TV. Hello, everyone. I am Rick Clark. Let me introduce you to Carlisle, Annabelle, and Zach. And as you can tell by these commercials, this family has a lot of fun. We have a great team here at Clark's. And we would love for you to join our family. Whether you're a young person looking for your first job, someone who's looking for extra work, or maybe you're ready to start a career at a growing company, we want to talk to you. To find out more and start the process, go to MyClarksPNS.com. Clark's Pub and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feel. Check out their specialty items in person or order them online at osmondpharmacy.com. Osmond Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osmond Pharmacy and Grill today. Osmond Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg. Call to the bullpen for the Rams. Connor Thacker will take over on the bump. Zane Bailey moves over to play left field. And Parker Fannin goes back to center. This is only the second appearance of the season for Thacker. He's got a 1-0 record. He's worked four innings, two hits, four strikeouts, two walks. Two runs, both of those were unearned. He'll go to work on the meat of the order, three, four, and five. But the Rams get a nice reprieve as they play three runs in the visiting seventh. And they lead it 10 to six. So for the moment, this is not a safe situation due to the fact of the Rams open up a four run lead. Two and a half hours in the game tonight. We went an hour 39 in a pitching duel last night. 18 hits in this ball game, six errors. The Lions trying to even things up in district seating play. They trail it by four here in the home seventh. So Ferguson's 0 for 3. There's a rocket on the third base side, but a foul ball. The 0 1. Nice pitch. Slings that one on the outside corner, nothing in two. The 0 2. Little bleeder over to the right side. That was going to fall in. No, what a diving catch there by Caden Shore. What a catch by Caden Shore on a ball that looked destined to fall in. Instead, it goes down for the out. There's one away in the inning. And Kyron Ferguson just leaving this play, shaking his head. He has had so many balls tonight that, and last night too, that. Should have dropped in and just for whatever reason did not. 
So Xavier Prater's three for three. Looks at a pitch upstairs for a ball. Called strike. One ball and one strike. This one lifted skyward out in front. Thacker coming on. He'll make the catch. Two down. So Kaysen Roberts is in 0 for 4. Called strike. Nice pitch there by Thacker, nothing in two. Thacker trying to come in and slam the door. Right-hander into his motion, the 0-2. Slings that one downstairs. One ball and two strikes. Packers had a huge night at the plate. He gave the Rams that extra little bit of cushion to come into this inning. With that two-run double down in the corner. This was an excuse me swing that's fouled off. Count stays at one ball and two strikes. Lays off. Two balls and two strikes. Outside corner called strike three. That's your ball game. Rams win at 10-6 as they move to 2-0 in district play. We'll break it down when we return after this on Cool TV. Primary Plus is celebrating 40 years of its mission of quality, advanced, affordable health care. With over 11 primary care locations throughout the region, Primary Plus believes in our communities and our patients. The Primary Plus name means primary care plus so much more. Offering extended services such as women's health, pediatrics, dental, counseling, diabetes management, infusion services, and on-site pharmacy that offers free delivery. Primary Plus believes in connecting health care for you and your family and is always welcoming new patients. Learn more at primaryplus.net. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition free. Good at Ashland Community and Technical College, this scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. Final score in this one, 10 to six. Raceland hangs on for the victory as they pick up win number 18 on the season, but they go to two and zero in district play. Here's how it went down. Rams played at one in the first, Lewis County added one. They stayed at that mark after the Lions left the bases loaded. Raceland got a run back in the second. They led it two to one. Then the Rams exploded for five in the third. One of those runs coming off the big shot for him at Braden Webb as he left the yard on a deep shot to right center. Raceland led it seven to one at that point. Lions get three back in the third, but again, they left the bases loaded. It was seven to four after three. That's when Xavier Prater really locked down. He held the Rams scoreless over the next three innings. The Lions got two back in the fifth. That was a seven, six ball game as we went into the seventh and the Rams played three, two of those coming off a two RBI double with two outs in the inning from Connor Thacker. That opened up a four run cushion and then Thacker comes in and slams the door shut. As 
the Rams pick up the victory by a final score of 10 to 6. We'll take a break. We come back. We'll look at our final numbers and wrap things up here tonight. Rams victorious. They go to 2 0 in district play. We'll continue after this on Cool TV. Hello, everyone. I am Rick Clark. Let me introduce you to Carlisle, Annabelle, and Zach. And as you can tell by these commercials, this family has a lot of fun. We have a great team here at Clark's. And we would love for you to join our family. Whether you're a young person looking for your first job, someone who's looking for extra work, or maybe you're ready to start a career at a growing company, we want to talk to you. To find out more and start the process, go to MyClarksPNS.com. Clark's Pub and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Spring fishing season is just around the corner, and Border Sporty Goods is your fishing headquarters for rods and reels from G. Loomis, St. Croix, Fenwick, Luz, Daiwa, Shimano, and Abu Garcia. No matter what species of fish you are targeting, Borders has the perfect setup to make your next trip on the water a success. Borders has baits in every style and size with a wide selection of tackle from Berkeley, Strike King, Zoom, Z-Man, Bandit, and many more. Before hitting the water for your next fishing trip, stop by and stock up at Borders Sporting Goods, US 60 West in Ashland. Let's take a look at our final numbers here in this one for Lewis County on the evening. Seven hits. Colton Tackett goes two for five. Xavier Prater, three for four. Both of them driving a run to this evening. All, all singles in the ballgame. No extra base hits this evening for the visiting Lions, who were your home team on the scoreboard. For Raceland, Braden Webb has a huge night. Two for four, a double, and a home run. He drives in two. Fannin with a triple. Connor Thacker with a double and a triple. Eisen also with a double. Connor Thacker goes three for four tonight after going 0 for three last night with three strikeouts. He drives in three. Parker Eisen goes two for three. Rams pound out 11 hits in the ball game. Pitching looks like this. Landon Bloss goes two innings, two hits, a run. It was earned. He strikes out four and walks three. He'll take the victory. Michael Pennington goes two-thirds of an inning in relief. Two hits, three runs, all earned. Strikes out one, walks four. Parker Eisen goes two and a third. Two hits, two runs, two earned. Strikes out four and walks two. Parker Fannin goes an inning. One hit, no runs, strikes out none, walks a batter. And Connor Thacker finishes out the ball game. He strikes out the last batter of the contest. It was the 10th strikeout of the night for the Lions. For Lewis County, Xavier Prater goes six and two-thirds innings before handing off the ball. 11 hits, 10 runs, 8 earned. Strikes out 2, walks 4. He'll take the loss. Waylon Reeder finishes out the final third of an inning of hitless scoreless ball. Final box score looks like this for Raceland. 10 runs, 11 hits, 3 errors. They leave 5 runners on base. For Lewis County, 6 runs, 7 hits, 3 errors. Here's the astronomical number of the night. They leave 13 runners on base tonight. They left the bases loaded 3 times in the contest. That is a number that I'm certain that uh, Sammy Holder will circle very, very large on that stat sheet when he puts it up in the locker room in this one. So the victory moves the Rams to 18 and two. They're two and zero in district play. Lewis County falls to one game under 500. They're six and seven now at 0 and two in district play. Now we switch things up next Monday. The Rams will bring Russell in on Monday. They'll go to Russell on Tuesday. Meanwhile, for, no, excuse me. Lewis County brings Russell in on Monday, goes to Russell on Tuesday for Raceland. They'll deal with Greenup County. They've got Greenup County scheduled to come in. For some reason, it's not on the schedule. There we go. Okay. Greenup comes here on Monday, and then they go, they bring Raceland in on Tuesday. And then Greenup closes out last with Russell or with Lewis. Grayson closes out with Russell. So a crazy evening where we switch venues simply because of the high water down in Vanceburg. Lewis County comes here as the home team, but they leave with a loss as they fall on the final score here tonight of 10 to 6. Hat tip to our crew tonight, Felicia Collier and Travis Otworth. Fabulous job by them. Always appreciative of all their hard work. All the great folks here, Marty Mills and his staff, and Sammy Holder and his staff with Raceland and Lewis County Baseball, respectively. Uh, phenomenal by both of those two staffs, what they do with their programs. Again, your final score, Raceland 10, Lewis County 6. For Travis Altworth, Felicia Carr, and everyone at the Coyote Sports Network, I'm James Carr saying good night, and thanks for tuning in here on Cool TV. 
Thank you for watching another Raceland Rams baseball broadcast live on Cool TV. This broadcast of Raceland Rams baseball has been an exclusive sports presentation of the Cool Hit Sports Network and Cool TV.